So I asked him, was he telling the truth in his manifesto when he said he was going to set out plans for 1,000 more police officers? Well, yes, we were, and we'll have uh, 1,000 more in our communities. We'll make the announcement in three weeks' time, and we'll do that by recruitment, retention, and redeployment. That's a sensible way to proceed. Uh, and trust in the government at the present moment is sky high, uh, as every available opinion poll shows. Yes, but the government's always in danger of losing that mm. trust, Mr. Salmond. I just want to absolutely qualify this. Joe Grant, the chief executive of the Scottish Police Federation, said this week, and I quote, we were given an unequivocal assurance, a promise by the incoming government, that there would be 1,000 new police officers in Scotland during their term in government. You say you like to, uh, to tell the truth. Either put your hands up and say you can't fulfil the promise or commit now to 17,261 police officers by the end of your term in government. Oh, but <clears throat> that was never uh, what we said and nobody would seriously argue that. We're talking about 1,000 police officers in our communities. We're going to do it by recruitment, uh, retention, because we've got so many officers who might be leaving, and we're going to do it by redeployment as well. But look, we're going to make this announcement on the 14th of November. That's when our budget's published. And then when we do that, there won't be any guessing games. People, Joe Grant and everybody else in Scotland, can look at what we're doing for police numbers uh, and see if we're fulfilling our commitments or not. But as you said, trust is so important. Mm -hmm. Joe Grant thinks there's going to be 1,000 new police officers? Well, we'll have 1,000 extra officers in the community available to work for our communities, and we'll do it by recruitment. There'll be more officers. All right, we'll so, do it by retention, so not, because not we don't want to lose the skills. Not necessarily 1,000 we'll more than by, there are at the moment. Well, that's, but on the 14th of November, we'll publish our budget. We're going to outline these things. We won't have to have any guessing games. People can look at that and see if this is a government, okay, well, this is a party, this is, a, this is an administration which is doing the best thing for police numbers, just as we've done the best thing for the many, many other commitments that we've already fulfilled. OK, well, trust in the government might be eroded if there's not 1,000 new police officers. Let's move on to another issue. You well, say you like to tell the, the truth. Sky page, high just now page, my yes, but that could always be eroded, Mr. Salmond, as you well know. You say you like <laughs> to tell the truth. Page 52 of your manifesto, we will reduce class sizes in P1, 2 and 3 to 18 or less. By 2011, will there be, in P1, 2 and 3, classes in this country with more than 18 pupils? Well, we're working already by employing, what, 300 new teachers since we took office 160 days ago, and we'll be making further announcements in the context of the spending review. But you're quite right to point to the four-year programme. Well, what we said and what we're arguing for is to make progress on these commitments over a four-year programme. Nobody expected us to do it in 160 days. In fact, no, absolutely. Many I wasn't are, asking you if you were going to do it in 160 <coughs> days. I'm asking you if well, you're going no, to do it over your full four-year term. I'm, we're working to implement our manifesto now that we've finally got the budget figures from Westminster over the, the four-year term. But can I just point out, Michael, that already there are 250 more teachers in Scotland than there would have been if the Labour and Liberal parties had stayed in office, and incidentally also a £40 million investment in new school buildings. Now, that's not bad for well, 160 Well, that's fine, yes, in absolutely. But last year, there were 4,316 classes in Scotland between P1 and P3 that had more than 18 pupils. Now, how many teachers oh. do you think overall they'll, you'll need over a four-year well, term? We'll be, driving, we'll be driving that down over the, the four-year period. It depends a great deal uh, on class sizes and population trends throughout the country, as you well know. But we'll see additional teachers in our classrooms as we work towards that commitment but over the four-year term. You're we already have that extra commitment teachers and, you and will, there's going to be a lot and more. And you will fulfil that commitment. Yeah, that's a guarantee. You'll We're, fulfil that commitment. Our, our position is that we are working within the context of the spending review to fulfil our manifesto commitments. Incidentally, there are many commitments, even in 161 days, that we've already fulfilled that are well in the way to delivering, like removing the tolls from the Fourth and Tay Bridge Absolutely. for one. You've had, you've uh, had or another one would be scrapping, of, you've had scrapping of student fees for another. You've had plenty of credit there yeah. as well. Um, page 54 of your manifesto, we will remove the burden of debt. We will remove the burden of debt repayments owed by Scottish domiciled and resident graduates. Will you scrap student debt by 2011? Well, can I just point out, I was just mentioning to you, we've already scrapped student fees in 161 days, and we'll outline our spending plans over the next four years on November the 14th. We've already achieved, in my opinion, 
more in office in 161 days than the last lot did in eight years. But Mr. Salmond, I'm, I'm, I'm merely Michael, asking that's you the if you're going of to, in Mr. Salmond, I'm merely asking you if you're going to keep the promises you made to the people of Scotland in your we'll, manifesto. We all. We'll we will fulfil our manifesto over the four-year term. We have just received the Scottish budget for the next three years from Westminster. We will be working to fulfil our manifesto over the four-year term. That is what people in Scotland expect. That is when it is going to be delivered. In terms of student debt, Michael, and the fact that people no longer will have to pay student fees in Scotland will in itself be reducing student debt. I am not asking for total credit. The people are already giving us that. Just an acknowledgement of the progress we've already made in 161 days. Well, let's move on to the furore surrounding the election and Ron Gould's report. Douglas Alexander has issued a qualified apology for his part in the fiasco. Will you, as leader of the SNP, issue an apology for the SNP's part in the fiasco, or are you blameless? Well, the Scottish National Party were not in government. The damning indictment in Ron Gould's report was of government ministers in Holyrood and Westminster who made a total burach of the Scottish election. That was not the responsibility of the Scottish National Party. No, but and the SNP... Is there the criticism SM in that regard of the SNP in the Gould report? Oh, I, I beg to differ, Mr Salmond. There is criticism of the SNP in this report. For instance, you supported the use of one ballot paper for both the regional and the constituency ballots, Ron Gould concluded that that was one of the major factors that led to the confusion. Well, the Abuffnet Commission, on which all parties sat, recommended that, but they also recommended a number of other things, including separating the parliamentary and the local elections, presumably in order that the instructions should be clear enough that they didn't result in confusion. Can I just remind you that what was said about government ministers wasn't that something happened which had unfortunate results. What Ron Gould alleged is that government ministers in Holyrood and Westminster, because of partisanship, had been responsible for bungling the elections. No one else yes. was subjected to that sort of yes, criticism. Yes, but Ron Gould also said, almost without exception, the voter was treated as an afterthought by virtually all the other stakeholders. Now, that includes the SNP. According to Ron Gould, you also sloganised by using Alex Zaman for First Minister on the regional ballot. Again, he specifically well, says that was confusing. I'm merely asking you to apologise for what you might think are the minor discretions you made and contributed to the confusion surrounding the elections. Well, can I just, I just point out, that was uh, put down as one of seven uh, explanations as to why people maybe didn't fill in the right-hand side of the ballot paper. If that were true, incidentally, it means the only effect would be that there was less SNP votes in the constituency section than there was in the regional section. What we did has been done by many parties. It's allowed under the Electoral Commission rules. And Ron Gould's recommendation, incidentally, is not to remove the right of parties to put a description. It's just to say that the party name should be first. And I agreed with that, and I've accepted the recommendation. So you don't take any blame whatsoever for the fiasco during the Scottish Parliament elections? No, the, the Scottish National Party were not responsible for the fiasco of the Scottish elections. That was the responsibility of government ministers, as is clearly lined out in the Gould report in Holyrood and Westminster. What the Scottish National Party are saying, and what I'm saying as First Minister of Scotland, is that we should implement every single recommendation in the Gould report. That's what I said in the parliamentary chamber, and if we're going to restore faith in Scottish democracy, that's what all parties should now sign okay. up to doing. Well, you're meeting for your conference uh, tomorrow. Is it just going to be a victory parade or are there going to be any particular <coughs> policies coming from your party members? Well, there will be both. I mean, there will be an element of celebration. I mean, the SNP has been uh, knocking about for 73 years and this is the first time we've won an election. This is the first time our delegates will be assembling with the SNP in government. So I think... Uh, a wee bit of celebration would be understood by uh, uh, the rest of Scotland in terms of what the SNP are doing in Aviemore. But, of course, each day will be marked by significant policy announcements. And, of course, unlike all the previous conferences the SNP have had, this time we'll be able to not just pass a policy, pass a motion. Uh, these will be announcements of what the SNP intends to do in government. Things like scrapping the bridge tolls, scrapping the student fees, investing in nursery education, adding to the many commitments okay, that we've already fulfilled in the first 161 days. And perhaps even 1,000 more police officers and scrapping student debt. Alex Salmon, thank you Well, very all you have much. to do is wait to November the 14th for that one, Michael. Alex Salmon, thank you very much. <laughs> A great pleasure.